So today I'm going on a rant because I asked on the community page and who knows, you guys actually read that and responded. So, so I'm going on a rant today and it's about things you can change and things you can't change and how you think one might be the other. Okay, so the nature of this thing has to do with two things going on. Um, one of them is that in the early 21st century, we thought we'd get a little bit political with our pronouns. And, you know, frankly, I don't care. You know, be referred to the way you want to be referred to, whatever. It doesn't make any difference to me. But the problem with the, we've got to change the pronouns in English, is that pronouns fall into a category of words that we call closed. So I'm going to invent an English word called flarn. And you're going to see that I can make the word flarn become several things in English. So I have 30 flarns. Pretty clear that I can make that a noun. Um, the flarn followed me home. You know, I, you can do things to it that you do with a noun. So flarn can be a noun, and that's okay. Flarn can be a verb. Caught myself flarning yesterday. I flarn on a daily basis. You flarn on a daily basis. But you see, it can be a verb too. So nouns and verbs, that seems to be okay. Um, adjectives, I can probably do that. Um, I have a flarn dog. Um, the flarn walls of the house needed some work. And so I can make it I can make it, make it an adjective. I don't know that I can make it an adverb, but I can say that I went to the store flarnly. So I mean I can shoehorn it into being an adjective adverb if I want. So those those four are examples of what we call an open category in language, but there are some closed categories. Um, I put the donut flarn in the box. I tried using it as a preposition, and it's like, mm, that doesn't seem okay. Or if I say flarn works every day, you're grammatically going to want to read that as a noun and not, a, not some sort of a pronoun. So generally speaking, we don't like adding things like conjunctions and pronouns and prepositions in English. We don't like to do that. Um, that's not to say that these things can't change, but what it's called is closed category. So we've got open category and you can add whatever words that you want and it's not a problem. We also have closed category and closed category doesn't want to just accept any old word, except that it does. It takes a lot of time. So for example, I'm going to tell you about a closed category word and it's one that everybody who knows English and is listening to this knows and it's you. Um, you is a very interesting thing. Generally speaking, when I say you, I'm talking to one of you, not a whole bunch of you guys. And again, you can hear I, I'm doing this pretty naturally. You guys is plural, just because that's where I grew up. If I grew up in a different part of the country, I might say y'all or yins or yous or who knows what. But you guys is what I use. So what on earth is up with that? So we're going to back up just a little bit to the fabulous world of Middle English. Early in the Middle English period, there was no distinction. Well, there was a distinction between one of you, and that would be thou, and two of you, and that would be ye. Or if I saw you, I'd say, I wouldn't say I saw ye, I said I saw you. But saying you automatically meant two or more people and everybody knew it because if I saw just one person, I'd say I saw thee. And everybody knew. But the French Normans came in and they came in speaking French Norman and French Norman has something called the TV distinction. Uh, TV distinction is a fancy way of saying there's a difference between how you refer to some people when you're talking to them. Um, not everybody gets called you. You've got to say something polite. And lots of European languages do this. French does it. They have e and bu. Spanish does it. It has tu and usted. 
Italian does it, you have U and Le. And again, whether these distinctions are still really living, breathing things, or if they're kind of fading out of existence, I haven't seen a whole lot of Usted online when I'm in Spanish-speaking internet locations, but whatever. The fact of the matter is they've got this politeness distinction in how you refer to people. Well, the English did not want to be left out when they came into contact with Norman French, so what they decided was they would be, they would say you to people just like you do in French. Remember? He and vous. Um, so they decided they'd set something up like that in English with the and ye, which becomes uh, the, well, thou, thou, and you over time. But I get ahead of myself. So this is going on 1200s, 1300s, and by the time Shakespeare comes around, it is mostly a dead thing. Everybody you're talking to is you, though... I'm sure if you've heard any Shakespeare, you'll know that Shakespeare likes to say thou or you, and sometimes he can be real flexible about one character referring to another character, switching between those two is like some sort of artistic effect. Pretty cool. Well, the problem is, is people want to be able to tell, am I talking to one of you or am I talking to two of you? Who knows? So we started coming up with all sorts of distinctions. And this is, by the way, you can tell this has been pretty recent and it's fairly dialectical, but yeah, you get stuff like y'all and you guys and all y'all and yins and all sorts of stuff like that. But it's dialectical and it has to do with the area and it's a language distinction. Like, I just would never say you all unless I meant I want you all to do this. But yeah, that, otherwise I'd say you guys, and I'd probably be more prone to say I want you guys all to do this, but I digress. But something really interesting is going on in English, and it's been going on for the last 800 years, so this is not a new thing that's happening. In English, we also have singular they, and singular they is really, it really seems to be spreading. I, I really feel like I can use it in a lot more places than. I would expect so. I'm a teacher, I take attendance, and someone will say, hey, this student isn't here. And I said, I know where they're at. Well, I just referred to one person. I know where they are at. I know where they're at. And I wouldn't be surprised if over the next couple of centuries, by the way, dig me up, bring me back to life, and I will pay you um, probably nothing because I've been dead for a while. Anyway, my wager is this, that they will continue to spread, you know, so we will wind up losing the distinction between he and she. We might wind up with um, a human or animate, like pet animals and animals when we're being specific about who they are. Those animals will be they, people will be they, pets will be they. And then everything else will be it. So like furniture will be it. So we'll get some sort of animate, inanimate distinction or maybe human, not human distinction in our third person singular. But that is going to mean that when someone says they're coming over, now all of a sudden we're going to be stuck with, well, how many days are you talking about? Are you talking about one day or more than one day? So I would not be entirely surprised to hear that things like, they guys and they all and they ins start showing up in English in the next couple hundred years because people like to have those distinctions be clear. If you liked my slight little rant about how you can't change things and how things are going to change anyway, even though you can't make it change and things will go in unpredictable directions, and if you liked my wager, especially the part where you dig me up after 200 years and revive me and brains. Um, if you like that, um, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I don't know. It's up to you. Make comments below. I kind of like those. Though, if you're one of my students, you don't need to say hi to me 50 times. That was, that was funny once. I don't know that I need that again. But yeah, if you've got something real to say, go ahead and hit me up. Maybe next week we'll do something else. I've got a notion for a title card. I might try to come up with some sort of a 
title thing for you guys? I don't know. But my notion is Pete has special interests, and then that way I can kind of talk about whatever I want. Anyway, till next time.